Okay, I don't want to do like live updates in the middle of uploading videos. But you couldn't hear the walk that I did. Uh, I was on the bridge, and the other day, the Oslo Bridge, just a live update, okay? I'm making it at 7 o'clock at night. And I thought, oh, next time I'm on the uh, bridge that's going over the Oslo Bay, I just wanted to do a video and not speak, because when it's windy, you can't hear. But I spoke, and I listened to it, so... The, the issues, I walked from Everhart back to Flower Bluff, which was good. And I'm not sure, maybe seven mile walk. And I noticed it was interesting because I'm not homeless, but maybe people think I'm homeless. At one point, I found a cross. It was a nice cross that somebody must have set up along one of the uh, grassways, maybe by the uh, bay area hospital and of course it, they left it there I guess for a long time I didn't take it but the grounds crew obviously it was rotten at the bottom and out of respect to whoever had died at that traffic accident they left it but I could see they were going to have to move it or throw it out because it was pulled out of the ground and sitting by the side of the road and I figured I'd walk with that and just set it up somewhere else which I did and maybe some people thought oh this is a homeless guy and I noticed like one car was pulling up to a red light and he ran the red light because he was more afraid of maybe some homeless person <laughs> but I also mentioned not only when I was walking but as we were driving and shopping in town today there are multiple intersections in Corpus Christi that simply do not have the name of the street that you're on at the intersection. Now these are uh, main ones. Why it is that way, that is a hazard. Because emergency vehicles, when you're responding to a run, I did this for many years, though we memorize most of the streets in Kingsville, if you come to an intersection and you know you're going to turn right on Everhart or whatever, you're going to get to the location, it's vitally important for the safety of a city, particularly at major intersections, and there were at least two or three that I saw. Over the years, I've saw others. I know, oh, I'm turning at a street. I know them now. But that is deplorable that we do not have that at some major intersections. And offhand, if, if I could tell you that but there's certain ones, maybe at the SPID and Castors, but it just shows me that the management is bad. Now, as I was reading the paper, um, I said, oh, I, I figured I'll do the update. But uh, the city is to sell three parks in budget crunch. The money they're getting for those three, a hundred and something thousand, look, that'll be gone so quick. The pool my daughter used to be a lifeguard at, and I used to take my kids to that pool. My daughter was a, a, a very good at swimming. She had some records for Flower Bluff High School, my oldest daughter, Bethany. But eventually the city shut those pools down, and the citizens just privately reopened things. Okay, when you have a municipality or city and that type of budget crunch, and you're, pay, you're spending 92%, of the city revenue from taxing on police and fire, you have to take a serious look at the mismanagement and, this, and the retirement system for public safety in Corpus Christi is city funded, which is going to drain the city. It's going to bankrupt the city. I'm telling you that. Now, the thing I kind of went off on, I titled that video you couldn't hear. McCabe begs for money. Andrew McCabe. Now we'll talk about how how we are, all of us are biased because I'm upset that the report from the coroner, the black man, young young black man who was killed in California, Sacramento, um, a month ago or maybe more. I haven't followed that case closely, but what happened in that case was the cops had said. Uh, they were searching for an armed man, and this young black man was hopping the fence to his grandmother's home, and his grandmother 
had kept, she was, couldn't get up, and also she let her grandson come in through the garage. Well, the cops, even through helicopter, were pursuing him, and they said he was armed, but he wasn't. And initially, I read a little bit on the case. They shot him, but they said he was coming at them with a particular bar, like a toolbar. They lied about that. And then they also had said he was coming at them with a gun, but it was a cell phone. Well, the family hired a top uh, doctor who did the autopsy, a famous man, and they just released, he was shot seven times in the back. Now, I have gone off on those things before. And if you talk about money that's going into in our particular city, 92% of the tax revenue, and you have that going on. Those things, I have, I have gone off on those for my new viewers. That makes me mad because at one point they heard on the audio of the cam uh, uh, one officer saying, shut your voice off on the cameras. They didn't want to have it. That upsets me. Now, there are many liberals that will also be upset about that. But at the same time, they will not be upset about Andrew McCabe, who is the FBI guy who his own inspector general, in their report, found criminal activity by that man. Four times he lied to the FBI. Now, McCabe is a millionaire, but all he suffered at this point was a delay on his retirement. And the liberals are outraged that the man committed four, according to the IG, four times he lied to his the own FBI investigators that were investigating. And General Flynn, whether you're a fan of Flynn or not, he was convicted of a felony for lying one time to the FBI. And text messages from the FBI agents themselves, Peter Stroke, initially said, uh, he just made a mistake, Flynn didn't lie. But then they later said, let's get him. So Miss, Mr. Flynn mortgaged his home or sold it or kind of went into debt. But Mr. McCabe, who has stocks, investments, homes worth over a million, he's a millionaire, believes, how dare I spend my own money? All he's worried about is the loss of finances. So he went online to beg for money a GoFundMe account, which calls to question, he must be aware that his actions were criminal. What innocent man goes online and begs for money and raises $400,000, yet he sits on his million dollar uh, or more money and says, I will not, I refuse to spend my money. You know, they just raised, this comes up on a video, and I don't think I posted it yet. I send 25 a month. I live check to check. Check to check. And I send 20, and, and I go in debt when I, we, we pay our $2,400 house taxes every year in Corpus Christi. And they just raised, Children International just raised by themselves my $25 a month donation. I... Normally, you'd get mad, and they just sent me a text and said, we decided to raise it to 30 a month. And to me, normally, if you're donating money to a cause and they decide arbitrarily to up what you're donating, that was a problem. But I let, I let it go because it's to a girl named Catherine in Africa. And then I take 30 a month. Or I used to take 35 $1 bills, but now that they upped it, I'll take 30 a month. And I can't save, and I was trying to save just a few dollars. Now, it's not a sense, and I'm thinking 400000 to a millionaire because he wants to get away with four, according to the IG, four felonies. The same things that he, that's a disgrace, that you would have the goal to beg for money like that. That upset me. But many of my liberals, oh, they're so happy about it. And many of my conservatives, my friends, might not be upset about that killing of that black man in California. So I see that that's what I see. That those things that upset me. Just reading the paper, the close selling of parks, 
you know, the budget crisis, and then the tax is going to be raised again. So we're in a huge budget thing. And, of course, I'm familiar with collective bargaining. I mentioned that earlier. And there are contracts that police and fire sign with the city, and they're mandated by law to give raises. I don't think the average... We love fire and police. But if not taking a serious look at the problem you're going to have down the road, and most of that money, just think, 92% of tax revenue goes to fire and police. Can you imagine reaching 100%? Most of that is done out of fear. Fear of people saying, we have to be protected. People that just saw me walking and ran a red light thinking this might be some homeless guy. Okay, so that's the update. I wanted to mention it because uh, that story about the black man, they did their own autopsy, the family did their own autopsy, shot seven times in the back. Okay? And that's what I was commenting on. And the other thing, take that people that, if people want to be idiots and send FBI McCabe $400,000, I think the fact that he's raising a defense fund is his acknowledgement of criminal activity. And the fact that the UNIG from the FBI, it now was released, he, Mr. McCabe lied four times to the FBI. You as a citizen do that. I'll mention the Elton being I got it on. I believe Judge Sandra Watts. I talked about Judge Watts before. And I, I, I could retell it. I believe she committed a crime when I went to jury duty many years ago in the 117th District Court. But at that time, we were watching when a, one of my wife's sons, he's older now, works at HEB, I won't give the name, but they had a CPS problem, Child Protective Service, so that young boy, who I liked, still like him, when the bus dropped the kids off after school, I had to be here, or a family member had to be here, so he could come here until later in the day. Well, at, at the time, I was uh, got called for jury duty. When I went in that day, years ago now, I said, well, they asked, does anybody have a possible reason they've got to be excused? I said, well, actually, we have a young boy that we got to be home at a certain time. I have to be home at a certain time, 3 or 3.30. And the mother meets us later, and... I said, and officially, uh, it was on record that we were kind of like doing that because of the problem that that family had. Well, anyway, I mentioned it to him. He said, well, when you go upstairs, you're going to talk to the bailiff or whoever. Went up, it's still a winter thing. And I said, well, this is, and, and that guy said to me, you'll be released after this morning session. You won't have to come back in the afternoon. This is official court guy from Nueces County, who the Innocence Project is now defending a former prosecutor because of the criminality of the Skirka reign. That's another story going on. So, we listened. Miss Watts went on, talked about the history of the law and all, not knowing later I would be giving her a lesson on it because of which he later did that day. And then during her speech, which went on for quite some time, and I thought you do have citizens there that are showing up to do their duty, and she talked for a very long time about the history of the court, sort of like, look, they, those people are there because the ones that are going to get cold, they're not there to listen to a history lesson. But she went on. Then she said, most of you will come back except for one of you. Okay. I figured, oh, she's... And then the bailiff said, he himself told me, you don't have to come back in the afternoon. You'll be released. That morning session was done at noon. I left, came home. And then about 3 o'clock, 
the mother was here of the boy at that time because we had to pick him up. And my wife, I was in this back room, I study. She knocked on the door, said, the cops are here. It was the sheriff's department. Said, the cops are here. What do they want? You, you're going to be under arrest for not going back for jury duty. Uh, well, I came in there, and I told him, what do you get? I said, she released me. Judge Watts released me. Then I said, you got to be kidding me. So it was a bench warrant, and I was arrested, then put in handcuffs at this courthouse in the hallway at the courthouse. And I was loud. And I said, you know what? you got to be kidding me. That woman in the bailiff said I could leave. Now, when I was in the hall, somebody came back out and said, and I'm in handcuffs, and said, she told you to quiet down. I said, you tell her you need to put, give me a court-appointed attorney right now. You treat uh, citizens like shit out here? Well, he went back in and said, oh, he is asking for an attorney. He came out and said, the judge says you don't need one. I said, you, you get me a court-appointed attorney right now. That's my legal right as a citizen. Do you think you run this thing like it's your game here? They went downstairs, got a guy who came up. Well, what's your problem? I said, I'll do all the talking. I just wanted to make them know they can't trample on the rights of people in this county. Well, I went in after they were done, and the bailiff lied. The officer of the court lied his ass off. And, and she thought I was just some, like, they treat the poor in the community like, oh, you know. I said, and I explained everything I told you on here. I said, and you yourself, Judge. Said, one of you will not come back this afternoon. And this bailiff said, I did not have to come back. Then he lied. And he said, I never said that. Plus the judge said it from her podium in the morning session. And then I said, you gave such a wonderful speech on the law and on the history of the court. And I said, the whole foundation of that law depends on true testimony. And I'm in this court now handcuffed in your courthouse based on a lie that this bailiff just told you and you yourself might have not remembered you said one of you will not come back I still had to pay a hundred and fifty dollar fine that woman should not be on the bench that woman should not be on the bench I consider when you do stuff like that you illegally hold people against their will and in civilian society, there's a severe crime for that. So I don't believe that woman should be on the bench at all. She was the one that released Elton Holmes. Tragically, that's the black man that ran over the uh, student from King High School, killed her and injured another one. That morning, she was the one that set the bond and let him be released, which would be a danger to society. Now we have this community of Corpus Christi and Nueces County. We have all this going on, the mismanagement and all the other stuff I've talked about over these last five years. If you're already stuck here, in debt, fighting my friends, fighting on code enforcement, and they're trying to get him on this thing. If you're already stuck here, and you realize once you got here that it's this dysfunctional in this community, then you make the best of it. But for people looking to relocate, they should be aware, up front, of what's going on in this community. All right, so I went off a little bit because I was reading a few of the papers. City to sell three parks and budget crunch. And those that are running the show are the most incompetent I've ever seen. From the 117th District Court all the way down. There are good people working as cops and firefighters. There are good people working down here. 
but the mismanagement and also the corruption. The other article is the Innocence Project, for the first time, is actually defending a prosecutor because he was fired because he would not withhold exculpatory evidence, according to the former DA, Mark Skirk. I've never seen this. I have never seen this. All right, so you get to hear this one, and this goes up in the middle of the other ones. We'll be uh, covering, I keep thinking it's Saturday, but it's Friday. But for the Sunday uh, sermon coming up this Sunday, hopefully I'll cover the verses from the Mass, and that's it, all right? You get to hear this one. God bless everybody.